Your buddy, back again. Blessed again because I'm blessed again. I'm back again. Y'all, excuse me, getting over a little bit of a cold sickness. Let me get comfortable. Can I get comfortable on y'all? Don't act like you don't grab the pillows and hold the pillows and hug the pillows to get comfortable. No, can I, can I do that? Can I do that for a second? Is that all right with you? Got a few things in my mind I want to speak for those who it's for. Our definition in regards to black people primarily, our definition of success is very, very, very twisted. Very, uh, very twisted. <clears throat> the things that we define as success, it makes you wonder. Now, I, I know what happened, but for those who don't know and those who want to think about it, it makes you wonder <clears throat> what in the hell happened? What in the hell happened? Because some of the things that we define as success is mind-boggling. We define success by how much money we can spend or how, how much money somebody else is spending. Oh, they're, they're balling. They're balling. Y'all give me a second. Let me, get, let me get right. Let me get comfortable. My pillows and stuff. Got my pillows covered me and everything. Come on, now. I'm going to be comfortable, y'all. Mm. Yeah, buddy. We, we define success by how much money somebody else is spending. How much one of our own is, is spending. We'll use that to define success. But when it comes to actually learning how to make money the right way, legally. Most people don't want to hear about that. They do, but they don't. More, more people of our people want to see the money spent in comparison to learning how the money was made. There are a small group of individuals that are at a point where they can afford to spend the money that they're spending. A lot of our people are spending this money, but they cannot afford to spend it. We take more pleasure in watching somebody spend money and, and we take more pleasure in spending money than we do in the process of learning how to make money the right way. Learning how to, to I guess we can say, create generational wealth. And we wonder why we never get anywhere. We rather sit on YouTube and watch a person spend money and claim that they're motivating us than to actually do it. And on the, on the flip side, the individuals, they rather get on YouTube and spend all this money than to teach the people how to make this money, rather it's through YouTube or <coughs> whatever platform um, they're using to make money, if it's social media or um, you know, however a person makes money in general. I don't really make money off of YouTube because my, my YouTube channel isn't that big. The money that I make as a, as a president of the corporation that I am the president, the CEO of, the funds that we bring in is from different business ventures. YouTube has been added to it to spread our message, spread our vision, 
um, and just, just to share with people. How is it that our definition of success has been going to the strip club? We get excited about going to strip clubs with our boys. I don't get excited about that stuff. I don't go to a strip club. I never really was into strip clubs. I'm like, I don't want to give my money away for free like that. That that that's just me. Maybe other people are are balling like that where they can just, you know, just say make it rain or whatever. But I've never been that type to go give the money that I work hard for for free to some scallywag. Did he just say that? To some whore? Did he just, did he just say that? Absolutely. I don't sugarcoat. And before you come with all this, oh, uh, don't knock the hustle, bull jive, People only say that to justify their own actions and what they like. Let's be realistic here. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a daughter? Do you have a daughter? Do you want... In any capacity of life, when you see your daughter growing up, is one of the professions you see her aspiring to be is it a stripper maybe a doctor maybe a lawyer could be a professional athlete could be a businesswoman it could just be a, a solid woman all the way around in every vision you have of something that your daughter may be is being a stripper one of them i rest my case you don't have a daughter you got nieces you got uh, people who have daughters that you know, that you care for, in any capacity of life, and what you wish and you hope and you pray for them, do you do you see them, or is is any of the things you see does it include stripping? No. This notion that don't knock the hustle that's bull job. You're just saying that because you love you love the strippers. And you go to the strip clubs and you give them your money, blase blase. They don't turn me on. Being in a in a in a a big old room or a room with a whole bunch of other men looking at women, shake their ass, filled with smoke and we getting drunk and all the other stuff, they don't that it don't do it for me. I'm sorry. <clears throat> it, don't, it don't do it for me. Back in the day, even when I wasn't married, that didn't do it for me. It just didn't do it for me. Especially being around a whole bunch of men like that, drooling over, over one woman and giving her my heart or her money. Nah, bro. When I was a child, I did childish stuff. When I became a man, I put away childish things but these are our definitions of of success for what for whatever reason you know what i'm saying in no capacity if i have a daughter do i want my daughter to be a stripper there's there's no vision vision or lifestyle choice that i would have for myself upon my daughter that I want her to be a stripper. And yet we go to these establishments, our people in general, and we support it. Degrading our women more and more and more and more and more. Yes, I know there are strippers of all what we call races, obviously. But we know we have a lot of our women that look like us that are in these strip clubs, getting their hustle on, uh, doing it so they can pay for college and blah, 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 excuses, Excuse, excuses. 
prostituting yourself so you can go to school to cure all this student debt is a bunch of bull jive. You might want to go look at and study student debt. The problem that it it is it has right now. You might want to go study how many people actually have degrees and are working in those fields. We limit ourselves to the so-called American dream, but we have to do it this way. <clears throat> we have to go to the colleges, go this place or go that place and do it the way they they said do it. I've never been like that. That's why I end up going to jail and doing doing time. And we have strategically calculated in our, in our mind that it's a boss move to be a stripper. It's a boss move to shake your ass and shake your titties for some dollars in front of people that are groveling over you and don't care nothing about you there, literally lusting over you in a sexual way, wanting to have sex with you. And we know how that ends up going down a lot of times where, hey, they're going to do something strange for a piece of change. Or even worse, if they don't do it, then they have stalkers. They have stalkers. And they can end up being injured or possibly killed because... This man feels obligated to, to get a piece of, <laughs> of this female because he's invested all this money into her. And for some reason in our mind and in our hearts, we've concluded that this is a symbol of success. Degrading our women and degrading women in general has become a sign of success. Getting drunk and you don't even know what happened or you don't know how you made it home has become a symbol and sign of success. If that's something you're doing, then shouldn't that be something that you're that you're doing or that you, that you keep in private? Not something that's portrayed to the masses that are that are that are watching us. Help me to understand how that makes sense. <clears throat> Help me to understand how strip clubs and all these other things getting drunk and Living these these supposed to be luxurious luxurious lifestyles. How are they symbols of success when you compare it to other things? Let's take the whole stripper thing, for example. If we take that and we compare it to a strong black family. Having children, having having a wife. Which one is more successful? I know you're gonna say, "Oh, d hey, these these people, you know, our people, they go into strip clubs. A lot of them are single." Okay, point. Because they're single, that makes it more right. In your mind, you justify because a person is single that makes it more right to steal, degrade women in that, in that manner? And don't get me wrong. This is coming from a person that used to have that mindset, not so much the strip club, but degrading women. Of course. Of course, because I was raised in it. I was taught a whole bunch of stuff that was simply not right. Being single doesn't justify... Continue, continuing to degrade women. Being single doesn't justify degrading the black man in general and say, hey, this is, this is what we do. When it's 
the opposite of what we're supposed to be doing, what we're supposed to be representing. What we do is we get married. What we do is we have family. What we do is we have we have children. What we do is we raise children. We raise up the next generation with our wife. That's what black men do. That's what true black men do. That's what true kings do. I couldn't have said this probably 15 years ago, not in this manner. But what I have learned is this. You live, you learn, and you grow. Notice what I said. You live, you learn, and you grow. You don't just live and learn. There's too many people that the only thing they do is they live and learn. You live and learn, you ain't did nothing. You run around in a circle. You live, you learn, and you grow because you have to apply what you have learned so you can grow. The growth comes from the application of what you have learned. And too many people, they don't apply what they've learned, which is why they continue to live the same nightmare over and over and over and over and over again. <clears throat> In comparison to how I used to live my life when I was single, marriage is, is success. But, you know, all these, there ain't no women to pick from out here. There, there are women to pick out here. You just don't want the women that are to pick from. And if you are in that position where you're able to pick, then you know that they are out here. You know that, you know they're out here. Maybe you are not the caliber of man that you think you are. Deserving of the women that you think you deserve. You got Kevin Samuels out here. Talking about high value man and everything. I don't completely agree with his definition of a high value man. There are many men that I would consider high value that don't make the type of money that he says you must make to be considered a high value man. I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't agree with that. Everybody isn't going to be a millionaire because everybody doesn't have that type of time to put into making that type of money. There are great men that are high value men who focus on, you know, educating children that may be teachers. Um, they, you know, maybe mentors or what, whatever it may be. They could be carpenters and they're making a whole bunch of buku money, but they are still high value men. So I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't agree with that. That's that, that to me, that's a dangerous statement to, to make because, You make it seem like it kind of, it kind of like as you say you you pooping on I ain't gonna say the word but you pooping on the ones who don't make the type of money but are stand up guys kind of like pooping on them are they not they not high value men because they don't make X Y Z for X amount of years maybe there are more important things to them than making that type of money. Doesn't mean that they can't make the type of money. They just focus on whatever they're focused on. Maybe they are they are content with what they have and what they are making. Maybe they make they make good money and they got money saved away. So if something does happen, then they have that that nessie. You know, I just, I just it's a dangerous statement, man. It's a dangerous statement, and it does a disservice to the rest of the men that don't make that type of uh, type of money. And just because a man doesn't make a certain amount of money doesn't mean he doesn't have access to a certain type of woman. Because if that woman really is who she says she is, then when she sees him and she's around him, she's going to see that just the, way, just the same way that he's going to see that. For me, a, a high-value man or high-value woman it's not necessarily somebody that's of high, we call moral character or moral, you know, moral fiber. That's a part of it. But even in that, I don't necessarily agree with that because morals are subjective. I deal with, I deal with absolutes. It's absolutely wrong 
for you to be coveting after your neighbor's wife or your, your best friend's wife. That's the absolute right there. You want everything that he got. Morals can be like, well, my morals say that it's not wrong for me to do that. High value to me deals with, with righteousness and standing up for what is, what is right, what is righteous, standing up for justice, no matter the circumstances, no matter what it's going to cost you. It could, it could cost you your life. That's a high value man because he's going to carry value no matter where he goes, no matter what situation he's in, no matter what female he's talking to. He's going to bring value to whoever's life he touches. I just That's just me. The percentage of people that think like I think is small. People will get on here and they will hate because I'm... I speak against strip clubs and not degrading women. Coming from a person that used to degrade women. <laughs> I used to have job sites that I was on. And I had the keys to the keys to the place. And I would take females to the place that I had the keys to. This is when I had my cleaning service and everything. You know, like after hours or whatnot when I, nobody wasn't there. And I would tell them to meet me up there and we would go in there and then I would knock them down. And sometimes I'd knock them down, I would tell them to help me clean up afterwards. <laughs> Come stay in, you know, we might as well stay and clean up. I ain't got to do too much. Crazy, crazy. But um, we have, we have to get out this wrong mindset. And the way that we think. We think these things are cool. We think these are symbols of success and we wonder why other, other nations, other peoples look at us the way that they look at us. Well, most of the examples that we have, they're bad examples. Most of the examples that we have, they are bad examples. We don't have a lot, a lot of good examples overall. But being that example you should be starts with you. It doesn't start with a Malcolm X type of person. Um, I mean, okay, even though we ain't going to talk about him. But, you know, these are the people that we mostly we, we speak about. The Barack Obamas and stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily start with them. It starts with, with you. Yes, we all have leaders in our life. And there's always going to be a leader of the people, somebody that's in the, in the forefront. That's it, what it is. But it doesn't mean that because they're in that leadership position that um, you aren't supposed to be leading in your own right. You aren't supposed to be leading in your own life. We get... I call it the um, LeBron James effect. And some of you can relate to this because people have spoken about it a lot of times, especially when it comes to sports analysts. They give them the team and they'll be so enamored at LeBron James on the court playing that they forget what they're supposed to be doing. And they end up standing around just watching LeBron do his thing and not engaging in the game and not doing doing their part. They end up being starstruck. Yeah, LeBron James is a great player. You know, you're he's gonna go down as, you know, in, in my opinion, as the greatest of all time. But you're still on the team with him. You have a role to play, you have a job to do. Even though he's a leader of the team, you're still a leader in whatever role that you are that you're you're doing. One day he's he's gone, and then what are you going to do? You you wasted your talent that could affect your next contract or affect your next move. Like I just said, we're always going to have leaders that are in the forefront.
But it doesn't mean that you're supposed to be standing around just watching what they're doing. It doesn't mean that you just sit here all day, every day, and you just watch other people's YouTube channels. You watch them spend his money. You watch their lifestyle. Most people are not watching it for motivation because if that's the case, then they will be putting in the work. They're watching it from a standpoint of idolizing, idolatry, wishing and hoping and praying, oh, I wish I could be this person. And these type of people are some of the most dangerous people in the world because they're coming and take or try to take what you got or what you have, you have built up because they don't really want you to, they don't really want to see you have what you have. In all actuality, if we're going to be real, they're watching you because they want you to fail or so they can critique, I'm, I'm going to say unrighteously critique because everybody needs critique in their life. This notion that the person shouldn't say nothing about nobody. That's, that's bull jive. That's, that's bull jive. All this positive vibes only. I don't buy into that. Even basic, the basic principles of electricity shows you and tells you need positive and negative. Basic science shows you uh, positive and negative for balance. Everybody needs to be critiqued. Rather, it's you critiquing yourself or others. Because a real man is going to take that critique. He's going to apply it. And even if, even if what a person says isn't true, for example, the stuff that uh, Real 2 Real said about me, it simply wasn't true. But I still took what he said and I, I questioned myself. Is what, even though I knew what he said wasn't true, I still took those questions he said and asked myself, is what he's saying true about you? So, th this is what we got to do. We got to get out of this mindset of, of watching. Just watch, 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 watch. I'm a doer. I'm a hearer and a doer. I live by that. And yes, that is in the Bible. And all these people, that are, all they're doing is watching you. you gotta, like I said, you got to watch out for them. Because they could very well be plotting on your downfall. Plotting your downfall. They want to critique your life like it's their own and not in a good way. You should do this, you should do that, you should do this, you should do that. When they ain't doing nothing in their life. They look big and bold on on uh, you know, the internet or social media. Because there's certain things you can fake for so long. But in real life, <laughs> they're not doing nothing. They're not doing nothing with it. And then, you know, you may meet them in person or whatever. And they try to present themselves a certain way. And <clears throat> and then they say, oh, yeah, I met so-and-so. And, you know, they treated me wrong and everything. Like, bro, I don't, I don't even know you. First of all, you walking up to me like we just buddy-buddy because you didn't see me on some videos or whatnot. Like that, that ain't cool. You think that's you think that's okay. But this is the world we live in. I want to also add this before I close. The content creators on YouTube, the black content creators, you're also responsible for these people to a certain extent. Because if you're presenting things a certain way. No matter if you're put it, no matter if you put yourself in a position or not, you are still a leader of the people. You're still responsible for the things that you're saying and the lifestyles that you're that you're putting forth. Now, many of you would say that you believe God. <coughs> <coughs> well, on Judgment Day, are you going? What are you going to tell God? That the lifestyle that you were putting forth, it was cool? Is God going to be okay with that? I mean, you tell me. So, to a certain extent, 
a lot of you content creators, the things you're putting out, you're going you're, you're held responsible for it. Because the stuff that you're putting out is not conductive or conducive to other individuals being successful. It's conductive, conducive to idolatry and people really worshiping you. You want the praise of, of the people. And you don't think other people don't see that. But I see it. I know others, a small group of people, they do see what's going on. But um, I just want to speak, just get it off my chest. I'm out. Got a few things to wrap up over here. Got a, um, a showing tomorrow, so I want to come over here and uh, make sure everything was straight, make sure it was clean and everything, which you know, it shouldn't be dirty or whatever, but you know, you never know. My wife comes, comes over here sometimes. Um, we had a showing... Well, we were supposed to have a showing the other day, but the person that was supposed to come view the house didn't show up. And like I said before, I come and check on my investment every day. Every day. I'm hands on. I don't, I don't play that. I don't play that. But uh, yeah, got another video coming. Probably after this one. Part two. Remember, we had a deal on the table that, you know, the deal didn't go through. Obviously, the deal didn't go through if uh, we have some more people coming to view the property. But I'm going to give you an update on that, let you know what happened with that. And we're just documenting the journey. We're just documenting the journey, the journey, <laughs> the journey, and hopefully inspiring some other individuals, like really inspiring individuals. For those who don't know, yes, I'm a pastor, and I'm out to prove that, you know, we, we as pastors, we get a bad, we get a bad name, bad rep. But one of my objectives is to prove that as a pastor, you can do business, especially in real estate, because real estate can be very, very lucrative, y'all know. You can do all this. You don't have to jack the prices up super high. When you're selling these houses to people and you can do all this without robbing the church, robbing other individuals. I didn't rob nobody and pass around no collection plate. I worked and I touched bases with other individuals that want to do business in this aspect. And they invested in, in the vision. It was going to pay them handsome, handsomely. Um, but if, they didn't give, I would still go forth with what I've been tasked to do, what I've been what I've been given to do. It's not like, oh, if I didn't have any investors, then I wouldn't be doing anything. I wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> not the case. Because like I said before, I purchased my first piece of land before I even moved here to Arkansas. Purchased my first piece of land before I even moved here. The house that you see me in that we renovated. It's just the Lord led me to this to this opportunity and I, I jumped on it. I jumped on it and it is it was and it has continued to to be a blessing. And I have not seen the complete blessings of what this this house is going to uh to provide. Obviously, that'll, that'll be when the uh, the house sells and the check clears and we move on to the next projects and the next projects after that, which we're going to be documenting all of that. We're we'll documenting all of that to show you that you can still make money and you could you could be a pastor, you can make money and you could do it righteously without manipulating people. Um, you know, it's, especially as a black man, especially as a black man. I want to inspire somebody on this channel. I know I've inspired other people on my other channel, but I want to, you know, document it from, from this perspective. Uh, not so much, as we say, preachy, preachy, but you no, know, I'm always, I'm always going to talk about God. I'm always, I'm always going to talk about Christ. That's never going to change. I'm never going to apologize for that. I don't care what nobody thinks 
about Christianity and about Christ or whatever, blase, blase, not going to change. Leave it, just leave it alone. Um, but yeah, you know, this, this channel is not preachy, preachy, but I'm still going to preach. That's just, you know, who I am. But yeah, I think I've done enough talking. I'm out. Y'all stay blessed.